Welcome back to another video. Today, we're over to see this beautiful creation. I remember this from many, many years ago, but let me introduce it. This is a rear engine, rear wheel drive, Nova. Well, let's dive in, let me introduce it and tell you all about it. this car from back in the day this started life still as a rear engine but it had a 168 valve on i think 40 45 carbs and obviously it's been passed through many many hands as we're hearing many people have owned it and it's been many iterations of you know design build and spec but hopefully this is its final owner who is going to finish it off and get it to where it needs to be because it has been off the road for about five years had good intentions of finishing it and have never really got it done so fingers crossed it'll get done so the good thing now which obviously i'm a power fanatic is the little eight valve has been taken out and it's got a z in so we'll dive in there shortly but we'll have a quick walk around so you can see what makes this car a little bit special so obviously you can see the width i'm gonna guess that's determined because it runs a Corsa C subframe. So it's mad to think this is how wide a Corsa C is compared to a Nova. We've got the intercooler along the back with the exhaust sticking out the rear, very much like my setup. Air intake and outtake in the boot lid. Again, a little bit like the Audi design and these giant wide arches, which I think were like part of the rally kit. I can't remember who made this kit back in the day. Massively wide arches, massive offset wheels to fill them. So obviously like my channel always is, I like to see them in this form where they're at progress and ongoing because you can see the work involved. As well as obviously the wide arches, it's very much a stockish Nova looking from the front. Apart from the two vents which have been cut out and had the mesh moulded in. Very, very subtle until you look down the side. How wide is that? And to think if, if you parked a Corsa C alongside this, you would never think it's probably what? A good six inches wider, if not more? To show you how wide it is, there's my hand. And that's both sides. So my hands are good six inches. You know, the other side, so a Corsa C would be 12 inches wider than this, which... I never ever would have guessed. Does it hold itself up? Yeah. Right. That's why. the fun end z20 leh engine this has been fully forged a wedged block uh piper cams double valve springs basically all the toys you'd imagine to make a good 450 500 horsepower and then the turbo to match let's go around here it's got a thrust manifold with a gen 2 gt3071 turbo 1000 cc injectors a simtek ecu and i have to say it a beautiful wiring loom with all the fancy plugs really really nice job on the wiring on the engine loom it should make again as i said 450 500 horsepower it's on an f23 box with the diff cable shift hence me saying you know that's the reason why this should get a vx220 shifter as you can see the boost pipes run to the back end and if you look close there we go 
This here is a standard Corsa C subframe. And as I said earlier on, this is why it's determined the width of the car because it's using standard Corsa C bottom arms. The owner tells me the actual car width, edge of wheel to edge of wheel, is six foot, which is surprising, like I say, so then that would mean that Nova's around five foot. Box section, space framed on the rear. What looks like a cage which goes behind the firewall. All box sectioned here, a Vibratec mount. Like I say, all the bells and whistles and all the toys, which is gonna make this an interesting drive. And also speaking to the owner, I've pre-warned him that bump steer at 150 mile an hour in these things is frightening. So unfortunately, when you build a rear engine car and you use front suspension on the rear, it does make the car suffer from bump steer. And for people that don't know what bump steer is, when you go on a suspension travel and the car goes up and down, the wheel turns in and out as the full travel of the suspension. So in essence, what happens is, Let's mine does it really badly in third gear. As I load the back end of the car Corsa down, the wheels turn out, causing it to be a bit unstable. And then as it comes back level, they turn in again. And that's what bump steer is when you're on and off boost. And that's what you see with the twin when I'm in third gear and I'm loading it up. This is some of the reason why when people ask, how am I getting on with mine? That's kind of the Achilles heel with my car is you're always fighting the bump steer. There's a few things you can do to change and a few things you can do to develop like longer track run ends and things like that, which I think he's going to look at. But to get the engine in the boot, to get it running and driving as you're seeing, is definitely a massive step forward. So this is obviously where the original engine would be, but it's been removed, as most people do, and put the fuel tank in the engine bay. Now, what they do with the front suspension is, you can't, I don't think you can see and get that down there. No, I probably can't get it, oh, there we go. You run the stock CVs in the hole, you weld the back up just to make sure dirt don't got in, and that basically sorts out your drive shaft issue on the front. And then obviously your heater matrix, you basically feed to the back of the engine. Obviously he's on a double brake BIOS, he's running a swirl pot, fuel tank, in-tank pump, a little face it fuel pump down there. But all the front is in essence a stock Nova, stock trailing arms with stock CVs in, just to stop obviously the bearings from collapsing. And then everything else has been fabricated out of what looks like 25 by 25 box section just to mount fuel tanks and other little bits and pieces out of the way so it can all fit nice and tidy under the engine bay so we're diving inside some really nice bucky seats very very much like you know a stock nova roll cage all fitted but a beautiful heltec dash as i said this is a work in progress there's plenty to do on it and everything is being upgraded and changed and modified hydraulic handbrake with the uh, factory handbrake don't know if the factory handbrake works who knows now the gear shifter these are always kind of the achilles heels with some of these and i think they're going to try and find a vx220 shifter because end of the day the, the engine is on an f20 gearbox so meaning a vx2 vx220 shifter should work out of the box but this is out of an mg uh, zf i think it is and or an mgf that's what it's out of with the cables matched into the box but again carbon fiber door cards lots of work done lots of work to be done but it's nice to see that it's not just sat on a driveway rotting away with aspirations of having it finished and it doing nothing which it has been done nothing for the past five years it's finally found its right owner and it's finally getting done we're going to sign this one off it's been really nice to come over and see this car and to see another lunatic that likes these rear engine builds especially in a Vauxhall because with me having the twin they fascinate me again I've always said how different people build their different cars like the twin engine Renault 5 how they basically welded a front engine of a Renault 5 in the back. This one to see, basically they've got a Corsa C subframe and then built around that. It's really interesting how different people approach these projects in different ways. So we'll sign this one off. It's been a pleasure and I'll see you all on the next one.